Hi guys, good morning. This morning we will try to uh, understand how to perform a good quality stress test for cardiac stent. First of all, look at the patient. It's very, very important to ensure appropriate indication for the study. This is mandatory. And then you need to look at the gender of the patient. Male patients generally are able to um, exercise better than women, even if it's not uh, mandatory. Look at the age of your patient. In order to understand it's better to use an exercise stress test, treadmill stress test, or a vasodilator stress test. Look at the BMI. Obese patients sometimes are not able to uh, reach a good uh, peak of stress. And then look at the ability to exercise. But on the opposite side, you need to be sure that there is no contraindication to a vasodilator stress test, like uh, stenosis of the carotids, like asthma, why not? And then look at the EKG. There is a lot of literature that seems to indicate that in patients with uh, uh, atrial fibrillation, for example, uh, diperidamol or adenosine or why not? Other stress tests are better than exercise stress test or treadmill in order to reach the best uh, ischemia evaluation. But we decided to use um, an exercise stress test. So after uh, the positioning of the patient uh, in uh, the bicycle, you need to use a 12 lead exercise, 12 lead uh, uh, AKG evaluation and uh, a continuous evaluation of the um, pressure of the patient. And then at peak exercise, you can, like in this way, you can inject the tracer. After your injection, the, the patient should maintain the exercise for one minute in order to have the extraction of the tracer from the blood during the ischemia time. It's necessary to have this type of condition if you would like to have at the hand the correct evaluation of size and extension of ischemia. Here. But in case uh, exercise or treadmill is not indicated, you can use a, a vasodilator stress test, like for example, adenosine. In this case, you need to have a pump for the injection in order to maintain homogeneous uh, injection of uh, adenosine during the six minutes. Or you can use diperidamol, but in both cases, in presence of asthma, these, case, these uh, um, uh, treatment are not indicated. So you need to use, for example, another stress test like regadenosine. Regadenosine is quite similar uh, to adenosine and to diperidamol in terms of uh, uh, the uh, vasodilation if, that you obtain it at the end. But if you can see here, while adenosine reach four different kinds of uh, receptors, A2A, A2B, A1, A3, with uh, different kind of actions, in terms of regadenosine, Regadenosine are direct only to A2A. So at the end, you have predominant coronary vasodilation. Partially, you have a vasodilation of the peripheral uh, arteries. You have an anti-inflammatory effect and a sympathetic simulation. It's very simple to use. Uh, there is a monodose uh, um, regadenosine vial that you inject uh, all the um, vial to uh, every patient, uh, you don't need to uh, check for the BMI or for uh, like for adenosine or for uh, uh, diperinable, but there is one vial, one patient. And uh, so uh, apparently you have to inject it in 10 seconds. I prefer to inject in one minute. It's better for the side effect. And uh, then you have to inject a flash of saline of uh, 10 milliliters in 10 seconds and then you need to wait uh, from 10 to 20 seconds and then you can inject your tracer. 
like in this way. So we inject regadenosum in uh, one minute. Please uh, look at uh, the patient, of the abdomen of the patient. Um, and then here, you see, she is uh, uh, changing the type of bread. You have here the injection of the uh, flush of saline and then the injection of the tracer. So it's uh, very simple, it's very fast. In uh, three minutes, you completed uh, uh, at maximum the test. At the end, you can use uh, the butamine as the last choice. Uh, it's not uh, very common to use, but you can use also this type of uh, stress for uh, uh, one. 2% of your patient, probably lower uh, proportion of patient uh, until uh, uh, the, uh, every year, but uh, we use it also in uh, uh, our lab. At the end of the stress, your patient needs to eat something and uh, which kind of food you can choose. In non-diabetic patient, for example, you can choose chocolate and uh, sparkle water. And uh, for diabetic patient, why not cheese? crackers and sparkle water. In this way, you can obtain the best quality of the images at the end uh, of the stress and uh, uh, after the acquisition. And then you can start with your acquisition when. Uh, in, your lab, in our lab, we choose the ultrafast protocol. After 15 minutes uh, from the injection, we start with the first acquisition after stress. Uh, Using the statement, see more, see before, as previously published. And this is a CZT scan. We use a CZT for our purpose, uh, seven minutes uh, with a very low dose of uh, injected tracers with a very good quality of scan. But we can see the quality of scan in the next video. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.